here we are at the Mego booth with the uh, man himself, uh, Marty, Marty, Marty Abrams. This is a pleasure to meet with the famous Marty Abrams. Uh, again, I'm speaking not just as a personal collector, as I've already said, but a big fan of your work and speaking for many more people cr across the United States. I appreciate that. And you're talking to a man who's now 70 plus years in age and was totally clueless on the goodwill that the Migo brand has engendered over the years and yes. that it's, it was still out there. Yes, it is. And so that, that to me was quite shocking. And we had the opportunity uh, to bring it back exclusively with Target and their team. Uh, we really jumped at the chance. Uh, and the key for us was not just having all these products which you videotaping and making it look and work, the key to us was the retail pricing. Because if you look at some of the products, and you yes. pick it up in your hand, if it was a collector item, you know it's a $100, $150 item. <laughs> We're putting it out for $25. Right. You take other items that look like the Batman here, which looks like it's a $40, $50 item. We're putting it out at $19.99. Right. The pricing to us is what, ha what really had to work. Right. Uh, and, 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 make, and make it work good. But the, the, the process, you, you, can see, you can see the detail, the excite. That's a 14 inch size. Yes. That's 20% bigger than the, the standard. And it allowed us to really dominate the shelf. Correct. And, we, and, and, and bring the whole product line alive. And it didn't make a difference if it was Batman or the Joker or Wonder Woman, Superman or Aquaman. Across the board, it just jumps at you. And, the, and, and it's, uh, the key is the pricing. And for, because we, we knew we wanted the collector's market, but we also wanted the kids to be able to buy it and, and yes. play with it. Affordability is a very big factor nowadays with the collectible toy world. Prices are only going in one direction. And um, what's happening is a collector that would like to buy everything that a firm produces are being much more selective. It's frustrating to the retailer, and obviously in terms of your predicting your your factory needs, it's difficult for you too. Well, and, and we understand that, and we're very sensitive to it. That's why when we put the team together and with the, really with Target's direction, that allowed us to pull together the right retail. Mm -hmm. Well, we're very grateful that that happened. It gave a number of people exposure that it was coming back, and, and people that weren't that familiar with the name now are also, so it served both purposes very well for you, Marty. You look, you look at the bandwidth here. We, brought, we have 120 different SKUs in the, in the, in the brand this year, double yeah. from last yeah, year. Yeah, it went right out of the gate. I mean, that's an awful lot. Yeah. I mean, and the work that was done and the quality of it. I mean, there, even when we made mistakes, it was good, because we had, remember, we, we built it from, from zero, a scratch basis, right. so we wound up having some of the action figures with two left hands. Left <laughs> yeah. So normally that would be terrible. But the, the, collectors, the collectors loved it because they turned around and said that, that's one, one of a kind. Yes, but you, you look at the brands. It's we, called a variation. You know, a, a variation. <laughs> and we even use contemporary stuff like the Impractical Jokers. We knew we couldn't get had, uh, the, the, uh, the Marvel characters, so we had to fill in some of our new ideas. And that's really what jumped out at us. Because we got Jimi Hendrix. We brought back Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley. Uh, the Impractical Joke is Bruce Lee. Um, I'm seeing some of these for the first time myself. Well, now, so yeah, I'll, yeah, and I'll we have let a, you know my impression. We have them in two um, different sizes. I, I, love, I love the Maryland, though. That, that's really uh, nice. Just spectacular. Uh, we, yeah. we, we're doing duplicates. You can see them bewitched, two different characters uh, across the board. And then we, in Star Trek, all we had originally was the original classic Star Trek. Yes. And because it was so successful, we now have acquired their entire library, Thank which you. includes Generation, which includes uh, Deep Space Nine, which includes all the original movies. We did not as yet get uh, the J.G. Um, Abrams um, piece of the action because that's a separate, that was a separate uh, piece. But w the, we have so much now to draw upon, upon, upon the history. And then we went, we went back to the, you know, some of the classic television shows. Uh, we did Fonzie originally, we brought Fonzie back, but we also got uh, the Brady Bunch, which we've got, you know, so we're doing some, we're doing some classic, classic TV. 
it brings the whole collectability across. And under one brand name, under the Amigo brand. Right, right, right. Yeah. That, that's still a very major portion of it. Trust me. Absolutely. Look at, look at Jimi Hendrix. It's 1999. Yeah. Look at that. Look at no, that, that will sell that, out that's very a, that's, fast. That's, we got the rights to do the original, the original Fender guitar. Now, when is this going into stores, approximately? Well, the, the, the eight inch is already in stores. We were Target, and this is going to go in stores uh, within the next uh, 65, 70 days. Thank you. You got Gorn. I really like Gorn. Well, everybody loves Gorn. Oh yeah, yeah. Even the whole, the whole play on Gorn with uh, what's his name. Um, Shatner? Did yes. you see that? Yes. Yeah, so the cool that we the cool was. Uh, I, I bought that. That's one of the ones that uh, you profited from. Yeah. Uh, but no, that that's great to see in that scale. Yeah. Well, we, we had we had a small eight inch scale. Now we have it in, in a fourteen inch scale. Correct. Yeah. That's great. Right. You're, you're crossing so much to do with pop culture here. You're going. Obviously, you've got Elvis Presley, uh, Joe Namath. Uh, oh, it goes on. We have, for next year, we have Twisted Sister. Bruce Lee. This is going to be a, a surprise big seller for you. And what do we have over here? Okay. No, Was it Oz? Uh, look, at, look at the sculpting on Spock. I mean, you, you get his constant... Thought process. He's always thinking, "What is going on?" Because there's, <laughs> there's no emotions. It was always intense, and that is and that's what we try to bring out—the emotional part of it, the intense part of the characters. Right. Now uh, you can see that with, um, right. with, with, with Kirk. You see that with uh, Scotty, uh, and, and we, we, then, then we have a, a, du a, a duet with the two of them. Right. Uh, right. Kirk and Scott. This is a great piece here. I like that outfit. That's yeah. Great. That, that's a very hot outfit. That item exploded off the shelves. Because of the green, the green. Yes, things. exactly. No, I, I never, I never got it myself. So no, that that's a very good one. The Romulan Commander is a. Yeah. I do have. <laughs> so we, you know, we, 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 now that we got, we got, we got the Klingons now. We got Worf. Uh, you know, uh, we, we, the the breath now is really going to start to open up and explode. Well, as I understand it, uh, what Farrah Fawcett Majors is coming out uh, sometime soon. Oh, she was. I she saw her is earlier. here somewhere. Yeah, I saw her earlier. I wonder if they, if she got moved. She was a bewitched character, uh, but yes, yeah, Farrah Foss is definitely coming. Yeah, there's other Charlie's Angels Here's here. Charlie's Angels with Chris Monroe. That's the, that's the small Gorn. Yeah, I stopped yes. by. The characters seem to be disappearing off the off the wall. Yes, yeah, I, st I, I don't know. Yeah, what's going on? I, yeah, I, I have no idea. Oh, yeah, Did they know we were coming? And, uh, you know. <laughs> I can see that, that guy there. Oh, that, they're going off a PR place. Uh, uh, all right, all yes. right. Oh, yeah, let me, oh, let me oh, I think the cord here. Oh, it's going back up. Oh, that, that, right, one's okay. that one's going back I don't up. Know, right. I don't know which one. They, they, they are literally flying off the shelves. Yes, even oh, really? even at, 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 <laughs> at Toy Fair. <laughs> but then you get the Brady Bunch yes. over here, Ch Charlie Charlie's Angels, as I said, uh, and the horror stuff has been great. So oh, that, the one that's gone is Bella Lugosi as Dracula. Oh no, no there it is, right, there it is right there. Yeah, there it is, yeah. Oh, it's just yeah, unbelievable. That is, that is really and then we have Frankenstein, we have the werewolf, we got uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. So it's been pretty spectacular across the board. And I, we're at that point here where we see Stan Lee. Well, let me tell you quickly about that. Please. You know, I knew Stan Lee before he was Stan Lee. And what okay. I mean by that, Stan Lee, be, and rightfully so, became this great mythic yes. pop culture character because right. of what he created. Right. But when him and I started to do business... He was just some guy who worked in the comic business. Well, he was the, he was the editor-in-chief yes. of the comic company. Right. But he had no... It was him right. running some artists. Right. Uh, he, he didn't, they had, didn't have the... Uh, that, that era where they were legends hadn't emerged That's yet. correct. Yes. Uh, and the, the one reason I think Migos has, has stood the test of time is the characters and the brands that we brought out with is, are as viable today as they were then. You're right. Batman. Yes. Today, then. Spider-Man. Yes. Iron Man. Today, then. Star Trek. Today, then. Planet right. of the Apes. Right. Today, then. And so we, we knew and we picked the right characters to bring it all together. And so Stan and I got together after 40 years, and the plan was, I acquired his IP, his, 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 the secret vault of Stan Lee. <laughs> and so I was gonna turn around and 
Marty and Stan get together after 40 years. Uh, we're going to bring out a whole range of great, great stuff, which I'm not, I don't want to announce yet what they're going to no, be, no, but, no, no. but mind-blowing <laughs> stuff that no one else wanted, or forget wanted, knew about. It. Yeah. And so, and then unfortunately he passed away. Yes, we had signed the contract before he had passed, but I didn't want to step on his memory. No, no, no. I didn't want to step on his time. I didn't want to step on who and what he was. And so we waited till now to announce it. But we have in place a whole brand new line of tons of characters with an exciting storyline that right up, the, right up his line based upon his humanity, his characters who are, 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 are flawed and yes. how they come back to life and how they build up on that. And we have talked to some of the major studios and we're lined up to get all that accoutrement around it, whether it be a television show or a feature film, whether it be, uh, whether it be uh, Netflix, whatever. Um, but the process is now coming together. So we, what happens is we start off this a little tiny company, went from zero to like seven, eight million dollars last year. Yeah. This year we go from seven, eight million, we're going to go to 35, 40 million. Good for you. But then we add him into that for next year. You're going to double between this year and next. Yeah. And then yes, that, I, I just, would say that's comfortable estimate. Yeah, it's going to really go crazy. So we're very excited about it all. Fantastic. Uh, uh, Marty, may, may I ask, uh, like, uh, about, uh, concerning Stan Lee, would you be willing to share uh, uh, one story of your time with Stan Lee? I never, yeah, was given that you knew him. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a recent story. So I'm at the licensing show. And I'm like, the original pitchman. I do the selling. I got the ideas. No, I got the creative. I want to do the selling. So I'm, I got a, I got a, on my back, on my shoulder, I got a bunch of my unique prototypes and I'm walking around like the licensing show with because I want to acquire stuff. And I'm, I'm going, Stan's coming from that direction and I'm coming from this direction. I'm walking. And he looks at me. He says to me, you are still pitching after all these years? I said, Stan, I don't, I don't quit. He says, that's what I always loved about you. It's in your DNA. It was, it's in my DNA. I can't help myself. And that was part of the process of why when I called him up to get together, it was he embraced me right away.